We can run straight into your arms unafraid. Cause every time we need you, we're met by love. We can lift our hands to heaven full of faith. Cause every time we worship, we see your faith. We can run straight in. Your arms unafraid. Cause every time we meet you, we're met by love. We can lift our hands to heaven for the faith. Cause every time we worship, we see your face.
church. Man. Woo. Oh my goodness. All right, I know nobody can sit down, but I'm going to try to get the announcements in. Woo. Praise God. Man. Remember when church used to be quiet and solemn and reverent, and now we just love God, that's all. Woo! Huh, it's going to be hard to do the announcements. <laughs> that was too fun. Okay, so the first announcement is, in case you haven't noticed, there are many more cameras in the sanctuary today than ever before. So we're taking thick... Uh, photographs and, and video for the website. So we're updating the website. So everybody smile. And don't look at the camera. Good luck. Good luck with that. Now listen, if you don't want your image used on our website, please tell Beth later. They're going to also be in with the children. So if you don't want your kids on the website, please tell Beth later and she'll make sure that they don't get on there. Okay, so let's do our um, scripture verse and prayer and declaration if we can while my heart rate comes down. Woo. Woo. <laughs> scripture verse. Today's scripture is Isaiah 61 through 3, which magically will appear up on the overhead. It's because there's cameras here today, isn't it? Or they passed out on the floor. It was just too much. Okay, I'm going to something else. Okay, repeat after me then. Okay, so this is Isaiah 60, 1 through 3, and this is the scripture for today. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See dark, here we go, see darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Amen. In our declaration this morning. Father, as darkness increases in our world, we declare that the light of your glory is rising upon your people and your church. This includes our leaders who know you, and your people who are in positions of influence. We pray for your people to have boldness and to be a demonstration of your light and your love. We declare that your light will draw all the nations and kings of the earth to you and your kingdom will be established in Jesus' name, amen. Man. Okay, I'm going to do the announcements, but while I'm doing the announcements, no, an offering's coming. So all you people that are surprised when the offering comes and, and are getting your checkbooks out for the first time. Okay, so the announcements this morning. So prayer opportunities. Um, Tuesdays, as you know, for the next little bit are going to be on Wednesday nights. And if you have been here on Wednesday nights, it has been amazing here on Wednesday nights. So... Make sure you get here on Wednesday night. Um, and by the way, it's pretty much everybody in the church has been here. So the place has been packed. So if you make sure you get here early so you can get a seat. Um, so uh, Wednesday at 730, it's called Seeking First. So just for the month of January, we'll be doing this, bringing everybody together to prayer and for prayer to God. Not necessarily for each other. Pastor Don tells us at the beginning of each one how the prayer is going to go. And, and um, then we spend the rest of the time just immersed in prayer. It's, a, it's um, amazing. The Holy Spirit is all over the place. Friday, 7.30 to 10, Limitless Youth. Uh, first Friday back. Is that this Friday? This Friday. All right, guys. Welcome back. And they have a blast in here, so bring your kids. Saturday, 6 p.m., Andrew and Rochelle Holmes album release concert at Abundant Life. Um, everyone is invited to support Andrew and Michelle. So if you can, go out to Abundant Life. Um, the address is on the board, I think. Yes, there it is. 
I'm sure we have something out front for you to do. Um, fasting guides. I hope everybody is participating in this year's fast, whatever it is that you're fasting. The fasting guides can come to you in several different ways. You can get it by paper, which, by the way, is really the best way to get it because you can take notes. And, and as, as God puts revelation on you during your fast, you, you can write it down. And I would imagine, knowing our pastor, that there is going to be a time someday when she's going to ask you, what did you get? So make sure you wrote it down so you're not like me going, I know it was good. Okay, so the fasting guides, um, you can get a hard copy for a $14 donation or for free. Um, and you can get them by email or on the website. I'm, I've been getting it by email, but really, I've been, I've been uh, putting notes in Susan's because she got it, the hard copy. So someday she may read my notes. All right. So, you know, I was thinking about this cause, because um, tithes and offerings are, have been very important in my life, um, in my walk with Christ, that, that it has been to me not just a demonstration um, to myself and to my flesh that, that I'm willing to give, um, sometimes out of pain, but I'm willing to give, but also to people around me, my kids and my friends and my family that watch as, as we give, as Susan and I give our tithes and offerings. But I recognize that every week we have um, a talk about that, and, and every week um, Pastor Don or Eric or whoever is up here struggles to find another way to say this to everybody. And um, so I'm going to try uh, yet another way. So this time we're going to take this approach, and that's in 1 Corinthians um, 1 through 10. It would be better if I had my glasses on. So why don't I do that? So Paul wrote, Now I plead with you, brethren. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all you speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but did you be perfectly joined together in the same mind with the same judgment? I cannot think of a better way. How many of you have ever said, well, we'll vote with our feet or we'll vote with our money or we'll vote with our. So it's time to vote with your money. OK, this is a demonstration to not just to God showing him our heart, giving up that thing that's hardest to give up our money, but to each other that we love his church and we are united in supporting his church and we are united in supporting this church liberty um, as we and our pastor as our leader ch chase after christ so when you're giving your tithe and your offerings to um, god through liberty don't forget you're doing this as a show of unity you're doing this as I'm voting with my money. You're doing this as, God, I want you to know not just my heart, but that I agree with these people, that this place, that this church, that this building even, is worthy of my finances, and that it's worthy, God, of you bringing your blessing and your anointing down on this house. So ushers, please get ready to take up the offering, or go ahead and take up the offering. If you're giving online, that's probably the easiest way to give. Um, um, I noticed that some of you on Sunday morning, you want to give your offering on Sunday, and so you push the button online while you're sitting in your seat. I have watched some of you lift your phones up and go, click. I'm like, okay, <laughs> whatever works. <laughs> so, all right, and my understanding is now we're going back to worship or we're going to you. All right, here's Pastor Don. Well, that was exciting. I feel like uh, the first part of my sermon you already did, but it's not so surprising because we're one in the spirit, amen? amen? However, you will understand why we are so crazy about God and why we want to show an outward expression of him when we're done. But before, let me see who's here today that I can call upon. Okay, so Wednesday nights, as he said, we are doing Seeking Him. And it is so powerful because hungry people are coming to pray. And so God is moving, and our agenda is his agenda. So, Natalie, I want you to come. <laughs> I see all that agreement in you. 
I saw it. And so I need a mic for her. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, no, always not. It helps me. Um, just say what you are getting from being at, at prayer on Wednesday nights. Um, just to make it about him, like, not to come. I mean, when we get the little paper, you know, Pastor Don's like, you know, like, you can have time to pray with him, like, about your situation, your circumstances. But just, like, pray for what, what's in his heart, like, what he wants to stir up in you. So putting him and his desires as a priority. So that's been stirring me up a lot. I mean, I'm very quiet, as all of you have known me know. And not on Wednesday. Not on Wednesday. <laughs> oh, my Atlanta. I, like, screamed. Like, my heart, and I knew Pastor Ron was coming. I'm like, oh, no, 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 not me, not me, not me. But the spirit was like, no, 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 stay with me, stay with me. And I felt like the spirit was trying to pull me back again. And I just felt like I had to scream, like, have your way, God. Like, <laughs> ah, like, let it be his will that's done. Yes. And that's how we should continue. Yes, that's how we should continue. And it was, it was the perfect way to draw everybody back into full focus on him and what we're doing. So yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, then. Thank you. Ooh. Okay. So um, is today a wonderful day? Yes. Is it a glorious day? It is an opportunity for us to be joined with Christ and with each other. And I believe God is doing something even more in that vein than he ever has before. Because he's causing a community of people who are so in love with him that anything can happen and anything will happen. And so um, I tell you all the time how important it is for us to come together and how he chose to be with us. And how that we don't understand this necessarily in our natural mind. This is a mystery to us how God joined us together with each other as his body to be an extension of his body. Does that make sense to anyone in the natural? But our spirit can catch this. Our spirit can get this and we actually understand that we are an extension of heaven on earth. We are the representatives of Jesus Christ. And so he chose us. So the word says this about us meeting together. It's Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Say, I'm not going to forsake the assembling together. Okay. Exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. So this is what he is saying that we need to do. How many of you feel like we're closer to Jesus coming back than we've ever been before? I mean, I can't tell you he's coming tomorrow. I can't tell you when he's coming. Even Jesus doesn't know when he's coming. But you can feel him drawing his bride into being the bride that he can count on to be holy and pure. So when he comes, we get to go with him holy and pure. Amen? And so he tells us who we are and what the end result of this is going to be as we come together to join him as a unit in this sanctuary. Whenever people gather together in his name to worship him, there is something major going on. Amen? Amen. So it's Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens. You're not on the outside looking in. But you are fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God. Built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, does God do anything without purpose, design, and structure? No. So the whole structure being joined together grows into what? A holy temple in the Lord. In him, you are also being built together and not and into a dwelling place for God by what? Oh, glory to God. You know, we can never do this on our own. We can't make ourselves good enough 
to understand that we are fellow citizens with each other or with him. But with him, the spirit comes and he brings a revelation. That's why we meet here. We're here to get revelation of who he is and who we are, that we can become one with him and one with each other to become the perfected bride, the holy place that he can dwell. Amen? Amen. Okay, so if we understand this, then we encourage each other by the power of the Spirit, and in his presence we become a dwelling place for the Lord. So there are experiences in the Spirit, and as she said, this, this turned Natalie from being quiet into an outcry and really a declaration of what needs to happen. And so his will being done on earth is his will. <laughs> Amen? And so that reverberated inside everybody else's spirit and you can catch things by the spirit that can never be taught. It has to be caught. That was a moment of catching. And when we come together and we know that the spirit is in charge, then we can rise into a place we've never been before and the spirit reveals things to us and all of a the sudden there's something different that happens because the spirit did it, we didn't. That's the way it's supposed to go. Okay, so this is, you know, we live in the United States of America. We are blessed. We are so blessed that sometimes I forget that we forget who we are and how blessed we are. The underground churches understand this. Do you know that they risk their lives to meet together? They don't just get, like in China, have you, if you've ever seen the, um, oh, this video makes me cry every time. I'll try not to cry thinking about it. But they love the Bible so much, and they haven't had free access to it. So what they do is they have torn pages out of the Bible. They give it to the people, and the, then they come back, and they switch the pages but they know that they have to come together because they know there's power in coming together in unity. They literally hide. They literally have to, to have these pages hidden because they know if they are caught, they could be killed. And that is not just in China anymore. That is happening all over the world. There is such, there is such persecution going on for the church and why would that happen if the church wasn't so valuable to the kingdom of God? So we have to understand that in our mindset, in the United States of America, we have to approach, and that's the name of this sermon, a glorious church, our approach, our approach to coming into this place should be that we have a mindset already set in place that this is a privileged place for us to join together and to be different because of what happens here in the Spirit of God. Amen? Okay. So, you know, we're not coming here to get a, um, to get a, I'm going to pump you up for the week. I, I don't even know how to do that. I'm not one of those speakers. I'm not trying to get you to anticipate, you know, how successful you're going to be in life. I am here to get you to understand Jesus is our success. I am here to get you to understand that the more that we know him, the more that we seek him, the more that he's in our life, success will just be automatic. It'll automatically come out of us. It's an overflow of him. Jesus was successful. Ugh. Okay, just that statement long I just, okay. So, God is wanting us to, as his church, his glorious church, he's, he's wanting us to come awakened to his power and his presence. Say power and presence. Okay. So, most people want the power. Don't you want the power? I want the power. It's not like something you have to be afraid of. I want the power of God, but you see, the power is God's power. You have to understand, it's not for you. God's power is not for you. It will bless you as he moves through you, but God's power is not for you. It's for other people. 
His power is for those around you. So God chose to demonstrate his power through us, and you will benefit by it because if God's power is flowing through you, you're going to be changed. It's just what happens. So, but if, you're, if your attitude and your approach to wanting power is so that other people can see that you have power, do you understand? It's the motivation of the heart. So we can't want power to prove we're spiritual. We can't want power to, to, to have a card that we can hand out that, you know, look at what God did through us or look what I did for God. It's more like it. So God is looking for those who have the character ability to get out of his way. That all of the glory goes back to him. Then he can trust you with his power. Amen. So the way we approach the one for power, even his power, is so important. It, it's vitally important. So you're going to feel better. It's going to help you. But how does he want his power displayed? Through vessels of honor who are concentrated on how others will benefit by it. There's been times when some people... You know, God, God just hits you sometimes with his fire and with his power. And if you don't know how to handle it, then you may mishandle it. So if, if his fire comes on you and you can't control it, and, and you're not supposed to control it. You're supposed to give yourself to it. But you have to keep in your mind that his power is coming to you so his power can get through you. So when you are thinking that in those terms, then you're wondering what, who is going to benefit by this power? Who are the ones who are going to benefit by me laying hands on them and seeing them healed? We have to understand there's a higher picture. There's something broader. So it's, it's not for us to be seen. It's for other people's benefit. Our church is based on Isaiah 61, the full chapter, but I'm going to read to you Isaiah 61, 1 to prove this to you by the word. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. That's wonderful, but there's a because. Say because. Because, mm -hmm. because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. Is that for their benefit? Okay. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Is that for their benefit? Okay. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Is that for their benefit? And opening of the prison to those who are bound. Is that for their benefit? Okay. That's why the Spirit of the Lord is upon us with power. Because it's upon us to bring something for someone else that is needed. Hallelujah. So we're going to be the ones that get to proclaim we are the ones that are going to get to set people free i mean that's exciting we get to we get to be a part of what god is doing on the earth that is awesome that is power but power is released when your heart is focused properly where you're positioned properly before him it's not just notoriety of power being your focus amen so his power is going to increase exponentially through his bride becoming aware of who we are and how we're supposed to be. Amen? All right. Okay, but the other part of this is his presence. God's presence is for you. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, I could make that statement, but let us pause. God's presence is for you. There's nothing like it. You want to change? His presence will change you. You want to know his love? His presence will show you. You want to be more effective? His presence will fill you to the overflow. And he decided that he would share his presence with us. Say, I love Jesus. Mm -hmm. So when we're in God's presence together, closed in before him, I think that's so important that we understand we're not, we're here to be a community of love, but we can't, even, we can't even do that without him. We can't love until we know his love and we're loved by him. We can't be the extension of him until he is overflowing inside of us. So we're going to be a dwelling place for him and we know it. So we have to demonstrate it. 
So you can enter into God's power for God's purposes, but to go all out, you have to be all in. And to be all in, it has to be about him. Amen. So what is the right approach to coming into the sanctuary? To coming to God on a daily basis? Like, how are we supposed to learn how to approach him so that we get his presence and he can trust us with his power? Okay, so the temple in the Old Testament, okay, God doesn't do anything without what? Purpose, design, and structure. So we're not going back to the Old Testament. Yeah, and you're going to be glad in a few minutes. We're not going back to live there. We're going to go back there to look at his structure that he laid out that we can begin to understand in the New Testament how it still applies to us. Say the Old Testament still applies to us. Okay, so everything that God wrote in the Old Testament is a shadow, a foreshadowing of what is to come in the New Testament. But we can learn what his structure and how he laid it out so that we can live our lives a little bit different. And so I want to talk to you, and this is in no means to tell you everything about what goes on in the Old Testament because I am not teaching you Leviticus. I'm going to touch on it and show you how it applies, okay? Okay. Okay, that's for somebody else other than me. Okay, so the temple in the Old Testament basically had four sections. We are going to start with the gate, because that's where they started. So the gate, everyone is welcome to come through the gates. Everybody is welcome there. So because it is symbolic, we're going to figure out how do we posture ourselves in the same way. This is how we're going to get to where we're going together the way that God wants us to, okay? So the gate, everyone is welcome, but we have to do more than just come through the gates if we're going to get the power of his presence. Okay, so the approach has to be that we keep first things first. So Psalms 100 verse 4 tells us what that approach is. And you did it today, and I'm so happy. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. Oh, hallelujah. So how are we supposed to enter in? With thanksgiving. Okay, so thanksgiving means literally. Adoration and a choir of worshipers. It doesn't say, you know, it doesn't mean this. It doesn't mean enter in, sit down, be quiet. It doesn't mean that. It means that God is going to meet us here in this place when we come through those doors, understanding that this is his sanctuary, understanding that something amazing is happening, understanding that we are coming in to bless his name, understanding, like, like you can prepare yourself for this in your car on the way here. You should be talking to whoever you're with, or if you're not with anybody, talk to him. What am I going to come through those doors with Thinking about what he's already done. How excited am I about what he did this week? What has he done for me? Oh, I'm going to bless his name for this. And I'm going to bless his name for... In fact, I'm going to start before I even get to the church. Because I can't hold it in. So I begin to praise and worship in my car. And then I get out of my car. And I walk by everybody else. Because I'm not coming here for you. I love you. But I'm not coming here for you. I am coming here for him. I am coming in here on purpose with thanksgiving and praise in my heart. And I am thankful to him and I am going to bless his holy name for he is the one that is worthy to be praised. Then you're not coming to church going, oh, I hope she pumps me up. Oh, I hope I can enter in. Oh, I hope I can get past my week. Nobody knows the troubles I've been Oh my goodness, leave that way before you get here. 
Because he is here waiting for his bride to approach him with praise and thanksgiving in their heart. Amen? So when you come in that way, there's not a there's not a need for a half hour of please come with the worshipers. <laughs> there's not a need for them to wear themselves out up at the front going, hey, come with me. <laughs> Worship him. You come in already. You're ready. You're ready to go. You're ready to praise him. You're ready to bless him. You're ready to offer up Thanksgiving. Amen? Woo! Isn't it exciting? Isn't loving him the best thing that could ever happen to you? Isn't there expression that comes out of you? It's supposed to be new expression all the time. You know, you can love him, but then you got to find a new way to say it. you got to find a new way to express it. Maybe you weren't. Listen, I was dancing with them. I just am not in the dancing ability at the moment. But if I could jump up and down and run all around, I would have been there. Because there is, there is something that happens on the inside of you when you are in love with him. When you begin to know his character. When you begin to know him in a close, personal way that causes you to get out of yourself. And causes you to long for different expressions. Like, that is, I, I'm so happy about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It just gives me another expression to love on him. I can love him the way that the Spirit wants me to love him. I love that. I love that. I love the arts. You know why the arts was birthed? The arts was birthed so that we have an extension of showing our praise, of honoring him where our bodies get involved to lead us to the higher place in him. That's why we raise our hands. That's why we clap our hands. That's why we lift up our voices because we are an extension of, of a body of believers that are saying, I can't contain what I know about you. And I don't want to anymore. And that's when you start going, oh, well, my feet, my, my, my toe is tapping. It never tapped before. Well, you're getting it. That's why you're going, wow, I don't know why I want to raise my hand. But all of a sudden you go like, you know, good half praise. You know, and then you're like, okay. And then you get lost in him and pretty soon you're like, ah! <laughs> your will be done <laughs> because it's an action of surrender amen not because it's something that we do in church oh my goodness it's because he is so amazing he is so wonderful he deserves everything that we are and we are absolutely dedicated to him surrendered amen okay Whew. so worshipers are those that enter through the gates with purpose. Singers sing. Don't you come in here and sing. Singers sing. Anybody can sing. You know, there's really good singers out there. And they sing. And they just sing songs. And they just make, you know, they can get you, you know, happy. They can get you sad. I mean, I could, you know, we could name some people, get you going. Okay? Country people, they'll make you cry. Just saying. It's all, it's, you know. And then you got, you got, well, whatever. I'm not even going to try because, you know, you know I will mess that up so bad. <laughs> so I'm not going to try. <laughs> okay. But worshipers, worshipers come into the gates. And they come with purpose in their hearts and the purpose is to get to know him more. And if they get to know him more, they will get to know them more. You don't even know who you are until you know who he is. Your DNA starts showing up. He, he like, he put himself encapsulated inside of each one of you. You begin to praise him and he begins to show up. All of a sudden you're like, I never knew I was like that. Well, yeah, you never knew it because you are on a journey of experiencing his presence. 
And in his presence, you find out who he is and who you are. Amen? Okay. So we're coming with gratefulness. We're not coming. Don't come in here one foot in, one, one foot out. I love you. Oh, but I got to go get groceries afterwards. You know, I love you, but I need to tell you about what you didn't answer for me this week. You know, you have to come in just acknowledging him as your all in all. That's how you're going to be all in. Amen? Okay. Now, we're going to move past the gates and go to the next level. The courts. Now, the courts were for those who gathered together that wanted more. The courts is that is the place where we, where we push past what we feel like doing. Because we know that there's something more that God has for us. Where we push past what else is demanding your attention, where we push past what other people are doing, what they think of you, and what you think of them. Amen. You begin to let your passion take you to a place past what you are accustomed to. You're understanding that there is a structure of God and you're understanding that the, the gate is just the way to get him to be with you. But you understand the courts are for the hungry people. The courts are for those people that go, I know what I already know. You know, some of you... Some of you may be more studied than, than I am, and you, or, or, or you could remember the chapter and verse, because this is why I have a Bible, a concordance, and a phone close by. Because I am not good at remembering the address, but I am really good at remembering him. This is where you go to the next level. You don't stay in a place of satisfaction because you know there is more that awaits for you. And in, in the courts, they could see the veil that was the holy place before them. And they knew that things were happening behind the veil that many wanted to be a part of, but only the Levites could enter in as they were appointed but how many of you know this is just a model and this changes in the New Testament? Because we are all invited from the gate to the courts into the holy place, into the holy of holies. Amen? And so, but I want you to understand the... The way that you position your heart for this matters. The way that you approach him matters, or he wouldn't have gone to all of this detail of how they they approached him then so that we could understand this is the posture of our heart we're supposed to have. So we enter in, we enter in knowing that we're going to praise him. We're going to be thankful. We're going to be grateful. We enter in knowing that when we get to a certain place, there are so many times when, when we are worshiping God and we get right to a certain place, and I know if you guys just keep singing and if you just keep clapping, if you just keep praising, that something else is going to bust loose. And that's when we get into the courts and we're like looking at the holy place. That's when we're like, oh, now we're getting there. Now we're getting to the place where he is going to be able to orchestrate everything that he wants in my life so that it will cause his name to be glorified. Okay, so now we're, we're getting there and we're approaching the holy place. And in the holy place is where your soul, your flesh is going to be dealt with. Okay, so someone say amen to that, because that's always the fun place, okay? So inside, the first thing that you're going to see is this bronze lever. 
Now, you know why? Because they're a bronze altar. And you know why? Because this is where there are sacrifices that have to be made in order for the people to have their sins covered. Correct? Have you guys ever read Leviticus? It's pretty bloody. Okay, so the animals that are sacrificed, sometimes it took four people to get those bulls in there because they smelled death on that altar. They don't want to go in there. They know if they're going in there, they're going to die. They can smell the blood that has been there before them. And they're like, I don't want to die. And that's where many of the church is today. Many people in the church are happy in the gates. They might even be happy in the courts. But when Jesus says, come a little closer, because in this place, You're going to sacrifice what I ask of you. We're like, okay, I'm going to lay that on the altar, everything except for X, Y, and Z. And he's like, no, no, come a little closer. I have more for you. In this place where where it is, you know, it's it's covered in bronze, and that is a, a depiction of our flesh. And so... In the Old Testament, of course, we know that they, they offered up animal sacrifices, and we know that the blood ran. We know that there was no covering for people's sin without the blood. Correct? Okay. And the, and the priest would take a basin, and he would gather the blood, and then he would pour it out on the altar. Well, that ought to get you excited if you see the symbolism. So... Here we are, Jesus, we know, okay, we know, just to give you some relief here, Jesus is our sacrifice. His blood has been poured out to cover our sins once and for all. So we are not studying this so that we can be miserable enough to get his approval. We have his approval. He already paid the price for everything that we need. But we are looking at the structure of how we have to posture our heart to receive more from God. Are you getting this? Okay, so I don't want you to get confused between the two. God is not going to do something horrible to you to teach you something. So you are not going to go into the hospital because God put something on you so you can witness to somebody. He will, if... The enemy has an opening, and if he attacks you and you end up in the hospital, then witness to somebody. With the understanding that God did not do this to you, but you are going to take advantage of every opportunity in your life to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So now we are, we are posturing our hearts, and we're coming into this holy place, and we are saying, I don't care. I don't care what this costs me, Lord. Because when you are there before that brazen altar, you are no longer thinking about yourself. You are thinking about what he did for you. You are thinking about the fact that there is nothing you could have ever done to cause your life to become a living sacrifice for him without him. That he has in one moment of time, if you have received him as Lord and Savior, in one moment of time, he has transformed you by his blood. You are, you are now past the place of thinking about how am I going to thank him? How am I going to praise him? Now you are thinking about what he purchased and how he had to purchase it. Now you're like, I don't ever have to go according to what the old covenant was like. I can approach you because your blood is covering me and I am going to join you on that altar and I am going to let you kill my flesh. Because suddenly you are so aware that you want nothing more than to be a vessel of honor for him. Nothing else matters. Eternity becomes a reality to you. You're in that place and you're, oh, he's just so wonderful. You're thinking about what he did. 
you're so aware of him, you're so much more aware of what he has done for you that you, you just want to have nothing blocking inside of you for his glory and his power to come through you to help others, for his presence to fill you up with an overflow so that you become different. And so here you are in that place. I so far, I have no idea where I'm at. Here you are in that place. Oof. It's where you don't come telling him how good you are and all the lists that you have of why you should get in to a higher place with him. It's where you recognize that I don't care what I've already given to you. Do you want something more? Is there another offering that I can offer to you? My life being laid down before Shine a light on any darkness that resides in my life. You want to adjust this? I'm ready. You want to change this? I'll change. If you help me, Lord. It becomes that place where there is, there is nothing or no one or anything that you desire besides him. Because you're looking and you're aware of oh, of what he was looking at when he was dying on the cross. He's dying on the cross and it says for the joy that was set before him he endured it. And it was for you. You. Say it was for me. It becomes so personal. You become so aware of how awesome he is. You're just, you can't even believe it, but you believe it. Because you're getting it by the spirit and not by your head. Because you've entered into this place where his, his sufferings have become so real to you. And now you're thinking of, I can't believe you took those stripes for me. I can't, you saw, you saw what was set out before you and you were willing to take lash after lash after lash after lash, not because you didn't need to, because evidently I needed it. And you loved me so much, you endured every single one of them when you could have at any time said, Father, get me out of here. I cannot take one more lash. I cannot take, I can't do this. That's why it says that he sweat blood in the Garden of Gethsemane because he knew what was before him. But his cry was, not my will, but your will be done. We join him at that altar. We join him saying, not my will. But yours be done. Change me. Adjust me. Remove things out of my life that need to be removed. Let me be a blessing to your name. Let me be a blessing to other people. I'm getting all in so I can go all out. I am going to be benefited, but they are going to have the benefit of me being benefited by knowing you and the power of your love. And so something amazing is going on. Because you're no longer just, just coming into church, but you're coming into a place knowing, and you can do this at home too. I'm not saying it's just church, but this is the assembly that God talked about. And how important it is, do you know why? Because when Natalie cries out, your will be done, it sucks you into it. Because there is a corporate anointing that is different when people gather together with the same heart and the same spirit that doesn't happen in your living room. Doesn't happen when you're watching TV. 
It happens when you have like believers that are so sold out that they have already come in and they've already become one with him in the praises and the thanksgiving that he deserves. And then you become that corporate body and everybody had their part to play. Jessica McCord, she, one, one of our youth, when she prayed out on Wednesday, she prayed out and, and I loved it because she started, she, I just said, what, what does God want to do for your generation and how can you pray that out? And so she began to pray and, you know, she prayed and then she thought she was done. Then I asked her another question. Well, what is God asking of you in order for your generation to be changed? And I, the, oh, the beauty of seeing people close their eyes and seek him to find out how to pray that. And that's exactly what she did. With every question, the response wasn't just a pre-ordered prayer that she already knew that she had already prayed. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was, let me hear what God is saying to the church that I can release into the atmosphere to cause my generation to be a generation that makes the biggest difference. Everybody that was there that prayed out, even if they just prayed in the spirit, they were affecting the atmosphere. Micah sung to the Lord. I love that. Expressions were different. Alfredo was quiet. Fine. The exp we need the expressions. We need what somebody else has in their heart to say. That's why it's so important to come together. When one person says or does this in prayer, the next one gets excited about God and they get another picture of what he's saying, what he wants to do, and it is released. And then we start moving like this, closer together, closer together, closer together, until we become one voice with one focus. You think heaven will not move and change our circumstances if we are fixed on him? That's what's wrong. We are fixing ourselves on, here's all the stuff you need to do for me. And Jesus is going, <laughs> listen, here's all the stuff I already done. You just need to get this alive on the inside of you. And then you'll realize all that stuff is just a waste of your time. You know, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. It, it's, it's like a fact. It's not, it's not some pipe dream. It's what he said. It's what he promised. It's alive. And when we are with him and the spirit, we come alive. That's where revelatory truth comes, leaping out of its pages. And when it is revelatory truth, it doesn't leave you. Do you hear me? You can forget what I said. But if you're with him and he speaks, you don't forget what he said. So what I'm saying is just to get you to get to him so he can talk to you. Amen? <laughs> it's really true. We, the church, are the ones that are holding the mysteries of God inside of us. Well, what are the mysteries of, the, of God? Well, the stuff we don't know yet either. How are we going to know what we need to know? How are we going to know the answer to the mystery? In his presence. That's how we're going to know him. He's going to show you things that are so wonderful. It sets your life on a different path. It keeps you moving in the right direction. It keeps your heart so tender before him. When we make up our own agendas and we have our own determinations in life, then we'll just work hard. A lot of people are successful to the world. 
They might have money. They might have 14 cars and 20 mansions and four airplanes and, I don't know, a zoo in their backyard. I don't know. Some kind of crazy stuff. And the world looks at them and go, oh, they're successful. They look at the, the people on TV and they go, oh, they're successful. But they're not successful at their marriage. They're not successful at being nice. These people are demanding. They're, they're not successful at being a role model anymore. They're a role model for the world. But they're not the role model that represents Christ. So what if the bride What if the church, what if the one who can't stay away from her lover becomes the model that outshines the model? If they become the ones that people start looking to and they're like, why are you happy? Because, you know, people rise to the top of what the world has to offer and then they kill themselves. Well, if that was tangible, and that was going to give you, you know, completely fulfill your life, then why are they dying on a regular basis? Why are they overdosing? Why do they have to do drugs? Why are they so caught up in bondage in every area of their life? They can't stop doing X, Y, and Z because the world has grabbed a hold of their heart and squeezed it, hoping that they'll die in their sin. Whoa. Jesus came to free them of the sin. He came so that he could appoint us, his church that already knows him, that have already been in his presence, that have already surrendered to him to send us to go make disciples. And going and making disciples is not grabbing somebody, sitting them in the chair and telling them everything that they're doing wrong. Instead, it is going out there and showing them how to be right. If, if people around you don't see any difference in your life, where's Christ? Did you leave him at home? Did you leave him in the sanctuary? Where, where is he? Is he? Is he living on the inside of you? Are you having a revelation of him? Are you taking the time to go home and go, okay, well, we did it at church. Now I'm going to do it here. Now I'm going to praise you. Now I'm going to worship you. I'm going to get my heart straight. I'm going to be thankful for you. And I'm going to get past the gates. And I'm going to enter into the place where, where hungry people come. Where the passion of God is my passion. Where you're going to see that you're not going to get rid of me until I find you. And then you're going to move forward and you're going to get to the place where you say, oh my gosh, give me another re revelation of your suffering so that I have no problem offering you whatever it is that you're asking of me because there's nothing I could ever offer you that could be any more than what you offered me. That's when the church begins to come alive. That's when something different begins to happen. Danielle. That's where you become abandoned to his will and nothing else. And that's just one item in the holy place. Just one. So you know this will be a series. Just in case you're worried about how long we'll be here today. <laughs> Satan really thought that Jesus' death would be the end of it. <laughs> ha ha. But what he didn't understand was that Jesus did it to create a kingdom of believers who would take their place before him and be willing to offer everything so that also the world could be saved. Because there 
willing to lead them to him. Because now he's so vibrant, beating inside of you, you can't stop talking about him. You know what's annoying? Trying to talk to other people about Jesus that are Christians, and they, they're not interested. Are you kidding me? I want to know what he showed you today. Uh, you know, what'd you get? I ask people that every week, multiple times. What did you get? Because you should always be getting something new. You should press past what you already know. There should be something major going on in you every day, every week, every hour, every minute. There should be a hunger that is coming from the inside of you so that you know him in such a way that when that sinner, that sinner that Jesus also died for, the one that you're not judging anymore, The one you've seen through his eyes. The one that God says, look at their potential. Look at what I see inside of them. Reach them. Touch them. Love them. You know why? He said, greater things are you going to do when I leave than I ever did when I was here. again experience because of Jesus. We become like him and become become believers on fire. Become the representation of him that are no longer looking at somebody's faults. Lord help us. Not somebody else's weakness. But we see them as a person, a real person. who might have been in the same place you were. We were lost before we were found. You say, well, I can't relate to their lifestyle. Yes, you can. You were lost before you were found. Do you know that God doesn't like have a, have a chart for sin? This is bad sin. that scale it's only in our brains it's not real sin is sin Jesus is Jesus we don't judge someday there will be a judgment and he'll be the godly just judge that is none of our business but our business is this to be representations of our king and his kingdom while we're here on earth
go out to the mall and look for the lonely. You can look for the lost. You can look for the hurting. And you can say, you know, I feel like God is leading me to you. Would you like me to pray for you? I've only had two people that have ever told me they didn't want prayer. Do you know how many people I've asked if they want prayer? Only two people have said no, thank you. I'm like, okay. And then I walk away going, I'm praying anyway. (laughs) You just won't know it, but I'm playing seeds.
You change everything 
to stay in your presence. It's where I belong. I long to look on the face of the one that I love. I long to stay in your presence. It's where I belong. I long to look on the face of the It's where I belong. Oh, 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 oh. Wanna stay here with you? Yeah. Bring with you. You draw me close. You draw me close.
Shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome. And your name is alive, forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome.
Yes, you have. Come on. You turn my morning into dancing. You turn my night into day. I put on all my heaviness and I put on this morning into praise. You turn my morning into dancing. You turn my night into day. I put on all my heaviness and I put on this garment of praise. You turn, you turn my morning. Turn my night into day. I put on all my heaviness and I put on this garment of praise. You turn my morning into dancing. You turn my night into day. Put on all my heaviness and I put on this garment of praise. You turn my morning into dancing. You turn. Today, 
the kind of love that won't
Thank you for joining us today at Liberty Life Center. We hope you were challenged and encouraged by today's message. Visit us online at libertylifecenter.org where we have links to other archived messages and even a place to give. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash libertylifecenter. We hope you'll join us again next week. In the meantime, embrace, display, and share God's love.